Thank you for tuning in to NSUSpartans.com as today we bring you a preview of the 2012 NSU baseball season. And we're joined by Spartan baseball coach Claudel Clark entering his eighth season at the helm of the program. And coach, it's almost that time of year again, ready to get going uh, for the 2012 edition of the Spartans. But first, looking back real quick at, at 2011, another uh, successful season for you, 24 and 29 overall record. But you really played some good baseball down the stretch, advancing to the MEAC tournament championship for the third time in, in your tenure here. What, if any, uh, uh, momentum did that team uh, provide for this year's team heading into the offseason and, and heading into uh, the 2012 year? Well, we cut quite a few uh, returning pitchers from that team and some position players and uh, to have a taste of the conference championship game, at least, and to have done pretty well in the conference tournament and over the course of the year, as you mentioned, you know, guys are very hungry about this year, especially with the additions that we've made to the ball club. They feel like they're in a position to win. I know you put a, a real heavy emphasis on the offseason uh, as far as conditioning, uh, you know, pitchers throwing programs, uh, as well as inter-squad scrimmages, that sort of thing. How did your offseason program go this past fall and, and how is that setting the stage for your team heading into the season? Good. I think the guys uh, adopted our strength and conditioning uh, concept. I think we uh, got a lot of good field work outside, got some great weather. I had an exhibition game or two exhibition games with uh, Virginia Wesleyan College and uh, had a pretty good showing there, had a good scout day and had some good uh, close workouts, I call it. And, uh, you know, guys really had a, a positive mentality about what they needed to do during the fall. And they really took it seriously, knowing that that would benefit them this spring. Now, if we look at your roster heading into 2012, uh, obviously, it at least appears on paper you've got the most experience returning among your, your pitching staff, a little uh, less experience among the position players, and you relied heavily a lot uh, on some seniors last season, the likes of uh, John Lynch, Brandon Harrison, and Chris Joyce, who started four years for you, and, and even John Raspberry, who was a two-year starter for you. Um, how do you go about replacing some of the production that, uh, that those guys provided for you last year? Well, as, as people have mentioned, those are tr some tremendous uh, offensive players and defensive players, uh, team leaders even. But uh, we felt like we had uh, recruited over the time those guys were here and had some good young men who were uh, maturing and uh, observing the game and, and understanding you know, that they would need to take over at some point. And that we do feel like, even though they don't have the number of bats those young men had, uh, they do feel like they can step in and over the course of the time you know, make up slack and, and make sure that it is where, where we need to be when we get there. Now, whereas last year you had a real veteran uh, offensive lineup, you had a young, younger pitching staff last season that really progressed as the season went along, and now those guys are, are one year older. Still a, a pretty young guy, a, a young group in, in terms of you know uh, sophomores, juniors, things like that, but guys that have a lot of game experience. What are you looking for out of your pitching staff as a whole this year uh, heading into 2012? Well, another good, solid performance. I know they did some uh, really good things, cut down their walks, raised their strikeouts, went deeper into games, and this really gave us a chance to win on a daily basis for some tough teams, as we mentioned. Uh, I'm looking for them to be more consistent with their pitches, more command, more control, going deeper into ball games, uh, understanding their role more, and uh, just being really ready to take the baseball uh, against any team on any day, uh, any situation, and uh, to get, make us very competitive. As we said about the uh, position players, I thought the pitching staff last year and even this year was somewhat young, and, and, and but that was a good thing because we have them some additional years, and they have low mileage on their arm. So we felt like we had good, young, fresh arms. And, and even with the position players, you know, guys are younger, uh, not as experienced, but they you know, have tremendous talent. And I feel like as these this season and seasons go on, these guys are really going to pay dividends like the Joyce and Harrison and, and Raspberries that we mentioned. Now, speaking of the, the pitching staff, you, you do lose uh, Ryan Shook for the year, who's out with some uh, ar uh, arm surgery that he had in the offseason. But nonetheless, you've got three reliable guys who started a lot of games for you, especially on the weekends last year, and Ryan Van Ash, who was a freshman All-American last year, as well as Jordan Egan, who really emerged, uh, had a, a nice season, and Justin Body, who, as a freshman last year, really pitched well down the stretch as well. What kind of uh, luxury does that give you as a head coach, having three guys who are experienced uh, in, in your weekend rotation back? Uh, it just really brings a lot of calm to the program when the guys show up at the field uh, during report time or leading up to the game that, that, during that week. They know those three games, we're going to be in a position to win. Uh, the games are going to get started with, with minimal damage, and they're going to really have time to be comfortable and settle in as position players. Um, a, a young man we did not mention was Richie Salter, who appears to be um, you know, fully healthy uh, as of this fall and this spring and as a tremendous pitcher and who could, who could rival any of the three that we mentioned. So to have a fourth guy who could possibly take the ball either on the weekend, midweek, or relieve, that's, that's really a luxury. And again, as a position player, you come into the field thinking, hey, we've got a great chance to win, and then you know those guys are going to be there for you pitch after pitch. 
Now looking at your lineup again, you do have, uh, although we, we mentioned some of the players you, you lost, you do have some really productive players back, uh, all MEAC players and Ryan Montgomery at third base and James Taylor in the outfield, as well as Sammy Serafine, Chris Warren behind the plate. So certainly the cupboard isn't bare for your, for your offense. What are you looking for out, out of that group of, of guys to kind of lead your team this year? Well, like I said, this is a very uh, speedy team, an athletic team, just kind of like we had last year. And uh, guys who can do a multitude of things, they can hit for power at times. Um, we should have a, a good on-base percentage. That's something we've really been stressing, um, being tougher with two strikes and, and really making sure you get on base uh, consistently. And uh, just really looking for those guys to uh, put a lot of pressure on the opposing team, uh, whether it be just through getting hits, uh, moving runners over, um, scoring from first, uh, second, third, or, or wherever they are on the base pass uh, with that speed. And then just putting pressure on other teams uh, with their speed and ability to get on bases and make contact consistently uh, and with a little bit of power. Now, who are some of the, uh, the newcomers, either, either the transfers or some of the true freshmen that you um, uh, expect to have an impact this year on the, on the program? Well, like I said, it's a very different level, but um, you know, we're very uh, impressed with uh, Justin Lee, a uh, young man from Great Bridge, um, James Essex, uh, who has shown his pretty good uh, athleticism in the fall and preseason. Um, you know, the, the, those two young men that really, I, I think, have stood out quite a bit. Uh, Jeremy Sandifer on the pitching side uh, has shown some pretty good velocity and a nice little off-speed pitch. Uh, Ian Shiner is another um, uh, good-sized pitcher that we have, right-hander, and uh, who has a chance to do, do some things on the mound. So um, th those four young men have really shown something. Um, a young man named Rafi, uh, Mikey Bruno from Northern Virginia, uh, he's come in and, and shown to be a pretty good left-handed hitter and uh, shown good defensive uh, instincts in the outfield. So um, you know, those, those five young men have really kind of come in and, and said that you know, they really want to challenge for some of these spots and playing time as well. And uh, they certainly have shown the ability to do so. So I think that would be an exciting uh, group in it, to add to the mix and to help us put some pressure on these other teams. Now you also mentioned that you're looking forward to seeing what uh, Ross Cardwell can do for you this year as well, both as a first baseman as, and as a pitcher, uh, a well, another well-known player as, as well from, uh, from the, the local area. Yeah, Ross is a young man we um, got over from um, Princess Anne High School, and uh, he certainly has swung the bat well from the left-hand side and uh, has things to learn just like the rest of the team. Um, but, you know, shown pretty good uh, instincts on defense and then good hands and feet. And uh, gives us another left-handed bat in the plate or at the plate with some experience. Uh, so we really feel like he can help us too in this, in this offensive lineup. Um, Chris Horn is another um, uh, transfer uh, young man who's going to throw some for us on the mound, a right-handed pitcher uh, from Patrick Henry Community College. And uh, he's also shown a pretty good breaking ball and, and has a good fastball and uh, shown the ability to eat up quite a few innings. So, you know, out of relief and over the course of a 50-plus game season and in a pretty tough tournament, you know, he's going to definitely be a necessity to our pitching staff as well. All right, Coach, and as you look at the, the 2012 season, uh, looking at your schedule, uh, another uh, home-heavy schedule. you got 32 home games here, um, as well as the continuation of the series with the Norfolk Tides. I know that's always an annual highlight for your squad. And, and another great addition this year, the MEAC tournament comes back for the start of a three-year run here at Marty L. Miller Field. So tell us a little bit about the schedule um, this season and, and some of the, the teams you're looking forward to, to facing. Well, the schedule turned out to be very favorable. Anytime you have 25 or more home games, now we got 32. Um, Villanova and Ryder uh, and Binghamton early in the season. Uh, we have Maine coming in uh, for a weekend series. Uh, Longwood will be here. Uh, so those are some very tough non-conference opponents, as well as the tough uh, MEAC opponents. Uh, we always look forward to playing the Tides over Harbor Park. Great local exposure and a good fundraiser for us as well. And then ultimately uh, having the MEAC tournament here with um, you know eight other tough team or seven other tough teams that will be here, you know it's just a uh, a dream come true for our program. And uh, we've hosted a tournament before and certainly have played well in it, but we feel like we've made some of the uh, improvements and, and uh, adjustments that we need to make in our program to be extremely competitive again. So we're very excited about that, and, and our guys talk about it constantly. I think our fans will be charged up, and uh, you know hopefully this year we get over to home. <laughs> All right, Coach, well, uh, we look forward to that. We wish you good luck during the 2012 season, and we'll, of course, be following up with you as the uh, campaign progresses. Just as a reminder, the 2012 NSU baseball season gets underway on Friday, February 17th, as the Spartans host Ryder in a four-game series that weekend. Again, you can catch all the action. All the home games will be offered uh, via live video streaming on our website, nsuspartans.com, and be sure to check back often for more details and more updates on Norfolk State baseball.